the Empire, a faction that many people are fond of, but not many people seem to know how to play properly in multiplayer, which is understandable because they're not actually the easiest faction to play. So we're going to look at some common Empire mistakes that players are making and how we can fix them. So, by Sigma, let us begin. So the first thing you have to realize when playing the Empire is that how you play them in campaign is not how you can play them in multiplayer. In campaign people often have a heavy artillery reliance or tons of missile units and that just isn't going to fly in multiplayer, even though the Empire has a ton of strong artillery and missile units. So we've got to get away from this super defensive playstyle because in most cases online it just isn't going to fly. So what do people tend to bring? Well, I see a lot of people bringing a fairly simple balanced army. They've got a cheap front line, they've got a whole bunch of missile units because, you know, they love their missile units, maybe an artillery piece or two, which is okay, and then only a couple of units of cavalry. Now, there's numerous problems going on with this army, but we'll start with the front line. Empire front lines are notoriously pretty damn bad, but did you know that that is probably your fault? That's right. It's you. And why? Because you're probably not supporting them properly. Example time. Here we have a little test. I've got a front line of four units of Empire Swordsmen. Not a terrible unit, they've got some okay stats, they're not too expensive, a good low tier infantry. Charging towards them though is four units of Goreherd, a strong damage dealer unit that eats light infantry for breakfast. So you can probably predict how this one is going to turn out. The Goreherd, with their high melee attack and weapon strength, are able to overcome everything that the Swordsmen have, whilst taking not too much damage in the process, breaking their leadership before they can really do anything, and this front line is running for the hills. And this is most people's Empire frontline experience. Now, same thing again, but this time they're going to have support from the man who is supposed to lead them. In this case, Volkmar on his altar. And he has, guess what? Battle prayers. They increase melee attack and damage resistance. This will help these Empire Swordsmen do more damage and take less damage, whilst Volkmar himself can charge around on his chariot, just racking up a bit of damage. Maybe even drop a Grand Soulfire to add a bit of flair to the party, supporting his troops fighting alongside them, not wheeling himself off to some other part of the fight where he isn't going to be that useful. He needs to be up on the front line, supporting his boys, and those battle prayers are his best way of doing that. He can still charge around, he also causes fear and terror. There's a banishment which comes with his altar as well. So there's tons of support that Volkmar can give to his front line. And as you can see, it's the Goreherd's turn to run for the hills. Volkmar and the Swordsmen have overpowered them. And they've done it pretty well. They've still got decent health, these Empire Swordsmen. They can carry on fighting more enemies. So hopefully from these two examples, you can see the huge difference in performance of Empire Swordsmen when they are supported properly. And that big difference came in the form, in this case, of a Lord. Doesn't have to always be a Lord, but in this case, it was Volkmar on his altar, who is probably one of the best at doing this for the Empire. So understand that Lords and Heroes are imperative to your frontline success. Let's take a look at the options. Well, as we just said, Volkmar is a great choice. He's got those battle prayers. He's unbreakable. He's got fear and terror, so he can help route enemy units quicker. He can have regeneration. He's fairly mobile. So one of the strongest choices for supporting your empire front line. And a lot of people's go-to choice, the emperor himself, Karl Franz, usually on Deathclaw. Now, while he doesn't have the battle prayers like Volkmar does, most of his items and abilities are designed for supporting your troops. So basically the same thing. And then of course for himself, he's very mobile, he's got fear and terror, he can do a lot of damage, so he can charge around and support his boys where needed. And then there's Boris, bringer of tots, can be an okay choice, not quite as effective as Karl or Volkmar perhaps, but he mostly has debuffs to the enemy. He can reduce their melee attack and or melee defense as well with his items and abilities. Can be a good choice, especially as he's a bit tougher with his regeneration. And the last main choice you may have is the Arch Lector. He has all the battle prayers just like Volkmar does. He can only be put on a horse though, so he's not going to be as useful charging around like Volkmar is, doesn't have the fear and terror, but can still be very supportive with those battle prayers, and like all of these lords, will cause encourage, increasing leadership, when nearby. So those are the main lords that are best at supporting your front line. Which one you bring is up to you, it'll depend on what your front line is, what faction they're facing, what your game plan is, and probably a million other variables as well, so you'll have to try them out and try to find the best combinations. 
But what if you don't want to bring one of those lords? What if you want to bring Balthazar Gelt or Marcus Wolfhard? Well, you still can, but you'll need someone else to pick up the slack of supporting the front line. Because of course, as we know, Balthazar Gelt can be knocked out by a well-thrown cheese sandwich, so he can't be down in the front line getting stuck in, and he doesn't have all the support abilities. He, of course, needs to make the best use of his magic. And Marcus Wolfhart is obviously better at range using his bow. So if you want to use a non-supportive lord, this is where your heroes come in. A battle priest, for example, acts basically the same as an arch lector. He has all the battle prayers he can encourage. He can stay with the front line and support them to help them to win. Even an empire captain could be enough. With the hold the line ability being dirt cheap, they can be very, very useful. Either of these two need to pick up the slack of a non-supportive lord. And you can combine these in any which way you like. You don't have to just bring one. You could bring Karl Franz on Deathclaw and a Battle Priest. Karl Franz could be off supporting some flanking cavalry instead, while the Battle Priest holds down the front line. The key point though is just to make sure you're using all the abilities to support your units. Maybe your front line don't need support and you can use those abilities on cavalry instead. But just know that whatever kind of front line you bring, it's going to be far more effective with the help of a lord or hero. One nice option the Empire does have on their front line is unbreakable units. They've got Sigma Sons, Flagellants, the Tatter Souls. All these can be very powerful on the front line, but they still will need those buffs to be really effective. But it definitely can be a strong option to mix one, two, or maybe even just have a front line of three unbreakable units, which can buy a lot of time for your cavalry to hit that hammer and anvil. So be sure not to forget about your unbreakable units because they can definitely have their uses. So whether it's a front line of swords, spears, great swords or unbreakable units, they're all going to need support to perform to the best of their ability. So the first two mistakes that people are making with the Empire online is that their front line is all alone and is unsupported and the abilities that should be there supporting the front line get wasted somewhere else. So think carefully about your frontline units and more importantly, how you're going to support them when selecting your Lord and Heroes. Now to the Empire ranged units, which is where most people probably fall down, bringing too much against the wrong opponents. In campaign, you can bring five Hellstorm rocket batteries and you'll probably be just fine. But in multiplayer, you're likely to get run over if you try that strategy most of the time. Now what I often see when I stream and watch other people play the Empire is a front line that isn't very well supported and that quickly breaks and then all their precious missile units behind get absolutely run through because there's nothing there to protect them. And that's the biggest problem with missiles for the Empire. You can't really protect them very well. Even if your front line does well, it's still difficult to protect them because there's so many threats that can get after missiles and artillery in Warhammer 2. And the other side of the problem is that the Empire melee infantry just isn't that good at protecting them. They're not designed for holding and surviving for a long time, which is exactly what all these missile units need. Time. Time to fire. If they don't have that, they become useless very quickly. Luckily, the remedy to this is very simple. You've guessed it, just don't bring tons of missile infantry, at least against most factions. Just one or two well-protected missile infantries can do much better than five badly protected missile infantries, just because you'll be able to allow them to keep firing and doing damage. The money it would cost you to protect 5 or 6 units of missile infantry properly is simply too much. But don't forget, good old skirmish cap, these are a fantastic alternative to missile infantry. You've got pistoliers who are great at kiting units as they have the 360 firing arc, great for harassing and providing constant pressure, and then you have the outriders with their armor piercing missiles, these are just handgunners on horses, there's just less of them so their damage output is a bit slower, but they can keep themselves safe. And then one of my personal favourites, the Grenade Outriders. These boys can put out a lot of damage very quickly and they can keep themselves safe. Great against light infantry, okay against heavy infantry, nice damage dealers. So all of these are nice alternatives to missile infantry. They're all mobile, they can all keep themselves out of trouble, albeit at the expense of damage output, at least for all but the grenade launchers. So give them a go. As a Greenskins player who often likes to run down the Empire with sheer numbers, it's often Skirmish Cab that gives me the most problems, because I can't get a hold of the little bastards. But when someone brings tons of missile infantry, I know my green boys are going to have a good old time crumping gits. And the same goes for artillery. In many situations, it will be simply too difficult to protect it all. So you've got to try and keep the numbers down or just not bring any at all. One or two can be okay, maybe even three against some factions, but that's the important thing. 
think about the faction you're facing. If they're very defensive like the Dwarfs or Vampire Coast, you know they're probably not going to push up and rush you because they don't have any great units for that role. So three units of artillery and a bunch of missiles will be easy enough to protect. But if you're facing a heavy rush or vanguard deployment army like Norska, the Greenskins, Beastmen or Chaos, you are going to have a very hard time protecting those three artillery because they're not going to give you any time to fire, they will be on top of you and they will overrun you. Also be sure to think about the map that you're on. Is it a big map? Is it a small map? Is it a flat map? Does it have loads of hills? How is that going to affect your missiles and artillery? Are they going to have enough time to fire before the enemy reaches you? So the third mistake you may be making with the Empire is that you're bringing too much ranged onto the battlefield, at least against most factions. Don't get me wrong, it's not that you should never bring missiles or artillery. Some can always be useful, but there is such a thing as too much, usually because you won't be able to protect it. But to tie into the next point, one of the bigger reasons you don't want to bring too much ranged is because you want to save a lot of your money to go into the cavalry. And the Empire Cavalry has always been and still is one of their strongest points. They've got some great cavalries for great prices that can get a lot done. But they seem to be most effective when there's more of them. And it's incredibly important for them to work together with the infantry and missiles. Nothing in the Empire should be performing solo, because they just don't perform that well when they do. The Empire are a faction that rely on teamwork. All this cavalry though does require a fair bit of micro because all Empire cavalry is shock cavalry. That means they excel at charging into things but they're not so great at staying in a prolonged melee fight. So they need to cycle charge, go in, get back out, go in, get back out, repeat. So they are fantastic at charging into lightly armoured infantry. The cheapest two cavalries, Empire Knights and Reichsguard, both not great on the armour piercing front so they do best against lightly armoured troops but they can hammer things from the front and do plenty of damage. They can then get back out, set themselves up and go again, racking up tons of damage whilst taking very little damage in return. But only if you can micro them well enough. So that's perhaps the first way you could make good use of these cheaper shock cavalries. The other option is to charge into the back of your engaged units so that they can hit units that are already fighting. This isn't going to do great in the charge front, but it'll do a little bit and will support your frontline melee troops, not only because they'll do damage, but because they can push back models as well. A great way to support your frontline infantry if it's struggling. But the ultimate goal of your cavalry should be no secret, it's the good old hammer and anvil. This is where you bring your cavalry around the back of the enemy lines and you hit their troops while they're engaged fighting your other units. The infantry is your anvil, the cavalry is the hammer and you smash whatever is in between you. This not only does big damage, but also hits for some heavy leadership penalties as well. So this tactic should really be the ultimate goal with your cavalry if you're looking to support the infantry. It's not necessarily easy to get and you'll very often have to work for it, but it's worth the effort. So the real problem here is that people just don't bring enough cavalry. They prefer to bring more infantry and less cavalry and expect that to win them the battle when really the cavalry is the strong part of their army. It should be the other way around. You need the nice strong mobile cavalry to compensate for the infantry weakness because you'll very often find your infantry getting outmatched. If you bring plenty of cavalry, you'll be able to support your front line and still be able to potentially pressure the enemy, get after their missile units, deal with their cavalry, whatever. But if you only bring one or two units, then you leave a lot of heavy lifting to just one or two units. So be sure to support your infantry with your cavalry as much as you can, looking for that hammer and anvil as the ultimate goal. And skirmish cav can also fall into this point of bring more cavalry as they can help support the front line also. Being able to quickly flank round and start shooting things in the back can be a very powerful tactic, very much the same as hammer and anvil. It's all about combined arms and having your different sections of the army support each other. Also realize though that that works both ways. While the cavalry is there to support the infantry, whether melee or missile, it may also need support itself. Empire Knights, Reichsguard, Demigriff, they can all use support depending on the enemy they're facing. They can sometimes be a little bit inefficient against better cavalries, especially Reichsguard and Empire Knights, because they don't have that armor piercing damage. So sending over some cheap spears or getting some missiles firing at the enemy or even some buffs from your lord are all going to help to support your cavalry. 
I also tend to find as well that Empire Cavalry doesn't trade well with monstrous infantry or single large monsters. Even if they may be able to beat them, it's not great in the value for money aspect if they're completely destroyed after killing their enemy. But sometimes it is necessary to engage these targets, but if you can get missile, magic or ability support, it can certainly help. So the final mistake you may be making is not bringing enough cavalry. Whether it's shock or skirmish cav, all of it is pretty damn powerful for the Empire. Their mobility is an essential asset for supporting your frontline and ranged units. But remember, cavalry needs support also in certain situations. There's of course a million variables, so you have to use your noggin. But if you can correct these four mistakes, you are sure to improve as the Empire and become far more effective, which of course will please Sigma, which is the only reason anyone plays Empire anyway. One last thing I should mention with the Empire game is their magic. They have a wizard for every occasion. They've got plenty of choices, all which can be useful in the right situation. It's all going to come down to which faction you're facing and or what your strategy is. If you're facing an undead faction that's weak to fire, then a fire wizard is a good call, for example. If you're expecting a lot of large monsters to charge around, then maybe a light wizard can net them in place for you. Or the Jade Wizard is always a great call with the healing. You can heal your important units, your cavalry, your demigriffs. Karl Franz can be a little bit squishy because he has to play so aggressively. He's often in harm's way taking damage, so that healer can help him be way more effective. And all the heroes I haven't mentioned who can also have their place. The Witch Hunter, Gottrek and Felix, they can all have their uses in the right situation. But you need to think about where they're going to be useful and whether they're the best pick for the enemy that you're facing. And lastly, just to give you a few examples of builds you could bring when playing as the Empire against various factions. Starting off in the top left against the High Elves, we've got Karl Franz on Deathclaw, he's got that Jade healing, like I just mentioned. We've got a bunch of cheap chaff infantry that is just there to tie things up and get in the way and be roadblocks, while most of the work is done by the cavalry. We've got a bunch of Reichsgar, Demigriffs, the Altdorf Griffites, and some Outriders just for a bit of ranged power. So we can try and cycle charge or hammer and anvil their infantry, have the demigriffs and ranged units or Karl Franz dealing with any large, and then just pressuring their missiles with all the cav. Against the wood elves, it's a heavy numbers army with lots of cav, great for pressuring all the missile units that they will likely bring. Infantry will do fine fighting against their infantry, gonna get that support from the arch lector. Got a lot of fire in this army too with the blazing suns and the fire wizard. Got the silver bullets, very useful unit for the empire with their stalk ability. Great for taking down flying units or fending off cavalry, large units. Lots of pressure on the empire. And then against the vampire coast or vampirates, a heavy numbers army looking to overwhelm them with numbers so they have too many targets to shoot at. But we got a lot of ranged in this army. Five units, but the Vampire Coast don't really have any great maneuverable units that are likely to get after them, so we should be able to get the money's worth out of them. We've got cavalry to get around the back, cycle charge them, hammer and anvil, and for our lord we've got Balthazar Gelt, who we know can't really support the front line that well. For that we've got two Empire Captains. Gelt can use Plague of Rust to help bring down large units or final transmutation to work on those ethereal units. So lots of pressure and returning missile fire against the Vampire Coast. And lastly, the Beastmen, again lots of chappy infantry, got Volkmar with his terror to try and scare things away of the Beastmen with their low leadership, and of course he can support a bit with his prayers. And then just lots of cavalry to cycle charge the crap out of the enemy, Pistoliers great against those Centigors as they're so lightly armoured. And yeah, hopefully this just gives you a rough idea of how to put together some Empire armies facing different factions. So there you go, a brief guide on how to play the Empire in today's multiplayer Warhammer 2 world. Now I get many people asking about my old Empire Army guide and I get many comments saying that hey you should update this guide, it's a bit outdated because the DLCs have come out and things have changed blah 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 blah. And well I do agree somewhat, I actually found watching that video back recently that it's still all kind of true and not really that outdated other than the new units not being in it. Although I did kind of notice that it was more geared for campaign rather than multiplayer, hence why this guide has come into existence. The other reason this guide is coming to existence is because I don't want to remake that guide just yet. Because we've still got Warhammer 3 to come out. I may remake the guide and then Warhammer 3 will come out and then they'll change the Empire somehow and I'll have to remake the guide again. Maybe. So I'd rather not waste the time and just give you this little guide in the interim which will hopefully help people improve as the Empire because as I say a lot of people do seem to struggle with them as they are a harder faction to play. So my Empire guide will be remade one day but for now You'll have to make do with this. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the future.